I spent, we landed in ground in December of 2004 and we got out in January 2006. So okay. it was, the deployment started in August of 2004. So the whole deployment was 18 months 18 and I spent about 12 months in Iraq. Uh, could you relay your most memorable day from that deployment? Memorable good or memorable bad? All right. The most memorable good day that I had is I remember that we did, uh, <laughs> we did an, an armed pizza delivery. Uh, my platoon leader decided that he got fed up with the food that was on our base, and he knew that there was a pizza hut that was about 20 miles north of us, so we all loaded up in our Humvees, locked and loaded our weapons, and then took the 20-mile trek up, ordered the pizza, and then came back down. Uh, <laughs> and, and nothing happened, luckily, um, but it was still really funny. It, you know, it's the only place in the world where you're going to get an armed pizza delivery guy. Um, the absolute most memorable, memorable day was when we lost... Uh, my friend, Sergeant Arnold Duplanier, we were, we were at this place called the DAC House. I'm not sure what DAC stood for, but it was a meeting of top U.S. officials with top Iraqi officials in an area chosen by the Iraqis that we decided would be, um, well suited and fortified enough that we could uh, defend it. So we got there and it was only supposed to take four hours but the meeting actually lasted about ten. Uh, we were dehydrated, it was hot, it was probably, it was a, at least over a hundred degrees and we had all of our armor on. Um, I was in my vehicle with my 50 cal and uh, Sergeant Duplanier was on the roof with the squad, and he was, you know, he needed to be able to overlook a further distance, which is why he was on the roof. Now, Sergeant Duplanier, he had a radio attached to his shoulder, and because of that, there was a sniper that saw him, and their TTPs, their tactics, techniques, and procedures were to eliminate the guy with the radio because he was most likely the highest ranking. And which was true, he was the highest ranking on the roof. He wasn't the highest ranking on the ground, but he was on the roof. Uh, the sniper shot, it pierced right next to his body armor. It went through his lung, ricocheted off his rib cage, pierced his heart, and went out the other lung. Um, he died on the helicopter, and then we went... When the helicopter took off, we made sure that the... the uh, command got out of there, and then we went to the hospital to where he was, where we found out that he had died. Uh, then we got called back, and on our way back, we were attacked again, uh, this time with mortars and RPGs and small arms fire. Uh, and we engaged, and there were five enemy combatants that were killed um, by our squad. There was a search team and special forces team that went out to look for the sniper. Uh, his name was El Juba, and they had actually found him and were called and told to stand down by the brigade command because they thought that we were out destroying the city uh, for revenge. Um, it wasn't until a year, a year and a half later, after we had already been back to the United States, that we found out that he was finally killed. But he was the El Juba was the most notorious sniper in for the other side in Iraq.